quickly, we're here to not only talk about podcasting, but specifically podcasts on you uh, on YouTube. The good news is once you have this mindset going in, you're going to be better off than, than we have been because we started in 2014. We only recorded audios, um, a lot of gains, a lot of benefits. We can talk about our journey, but man, I really wish I recorded the videos from the get go. And, um, so with that said, it's Faye spelled a little differently. I'm originally from Beijing, China. I decided to keep the spelling of my name exactly the way it is. It was. So who I am, I'm a content creator, podcaster since 2014. I've been on YouTube since uh, late 2019 and currently have over 21,000 subscribers over, I think over 3 million views so far. I'm also a blogger behind Face World Media. I offer YouTube strategy consulting and podcast strategy consulting to entrepreneurs and businesses who believe in content-based strategies. And my profession before becoming an entrepreneur in 2016 is that I actually spent about a decade working in consulting and advertising in Boston. So that's my story. So Adam's no stranger. Adam, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Adam Lefford. I'm a freelance full stack. I guess I'm not going to read the thing. Uh, I'm a by profession and focus. I'm a technology person. So after 40 years of freelancing, I now find myself as a cloud architect in the podcasting world and listening to the people that are here today. What I can also offer is that I'm very familiar with the sort of zero to one. So Facebook's fairly big and we're trying to do these big, powerful things with it. But we've worked with other podcasts just getting started and answering questions about why should I or does it matter that there's already two million or what does success look like? How do I know that I'm doing the right thing? Things like that. So I'm happy to talk about that, answer questions on that. And as a technology person and a software developer, I also develop software to make podcasting and specifically podcasting with video easier, more effective, quicker, and uh, less strain on your brain. So we'll get to talking about that a little bit later. Cool. We're excited to be here for sure. So, um, you know, to get into this without a very complicated agenda, I figure since we're here to talk about podcasting and how you can leverage YouTube also for your podcast and potentially grow it much faster, um, that's, we have to get into the why. And then how to do that is, okay, how to actually increase your podcast reach with video um, as this not so new format um, hint, YouTube actually announced in fall last year that they're taking this whole podcasting thing on their platform very seriously, which means they're driving a lot of organic traffic. You probably have noticed if you're a YouTube user, there are a lot more podcasters now promoting their content long and short form. And third thing is how to actually start recording videos for your podcast. So you may already know how to record audios, um, but here we'll Talk about how to very easily, uh, affordably record videos as well. Number four is pod intelligence, how to do more with both your audios and, and audio and video podcasts. Adam and I have been living with this pain for seven, eight years of literally, we have 350 episodes on our show. And sometimes people say, what is your show about? Well, we pivoted a few times and there are many different walks of life and different things we've done. And wouldn't it be nice to go down and actually grab keywords and specific segment to know exactly what you talked about. So I know that for some of you, you might not be thinking in this term just yet, but it would be helpful to keep that in mind. So with that said, uh, with this logo, I just want to clarify the fact that, you know, first of all, thank you so much PRX for inviting us very grateful for, for today's session, but please, you know, you can, I'm going to try to watch, raise your hand or simply speak up so I can hear you. If you have a question, uh, I can certainly pause the slide and dive right in. I know that sometimes it's harder to have to hold the question in for 45 minutes and then ask it later. So my email, hello at phaseworld.com, we'll be sharing this recording, also the slides with you. And if you have any more questions, we just want to be very supportive of creators. So please reach out to us. All right. So a bit of a, a background and story that I find to be important to mention uh, in 2014, my goal of starting a podcast, again, I was also um, as you know, English as a second language person, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to create content, to practice my interview skills, to connect with more people. 
And also as an immigrant living in the US, it's not like we, you know, we immediately have so many friends and all that. I thought it would just be great uh, for me to connect with the people I really want to learn from. And we didn't realize the impact of the show by connecting with unsung heroes and self-made artists. So the show started to uh, take off a bit. And by the way, we're only talking about at the time, a few hundred downloads, maybe 500 downloads. We had a few episodes, about a dozen or so episodes that had thousands of downloads. But again, that was not really the norm for us. And uh, over the years, we get to meet with a lot of our heroes. Adam, maybe, you know, Adam has been with the, on this journey with me since the very beginning. Adam, anything that comes to mind that people that you really liked uh, uh, as part of the interview journey and connecting with in person or virtually? Yeah, so it's sort of been a, a special thing for me because not to talk too much myself, I never really had like sports heroes or the people that other people really look up to, but we, we had these phases and one of them almost oddly enough was Cirque du Soleil. So it started off with just a trip to see Cirque and Faye reached out to a performer and cut to the chase. We've had like 15 circus athletes on the podcast. So why mention that? to be able to go from interviewing somebody to say, oh, you know, when you're in town, you should look us up, to babysitting their kids, to asking them, what's it like to be 100 feet in the air and holding on to a rope and holding your brother in the other hand without a net? So, you know, there's a business side to podcasting. There's the, you know, interview your family for oral history. There's all these ways that you might want to go with it. But especially for this group, the people we meet and get to talk closely in a casual environment is pretty amazing. And, and for work stuff too, if there's somebody we're interested in, we just reach out and say, hey, could we interview you? And we're surprised how often they say yes. Lastly, it was, you know, we, we sort of stole this phrase from Tony Robbins, uh, the power of vulnerability. When we got started, uh, we used the fact that nobody had heard of us as like a, a benefit. You know, so we said to uh, James Altucher, hey, if we get 5,000 downloads, will you come on our podcast? And he said, yes didn't happen, but he took a train to New York with his then wife and we did two presentations at an agency. So I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up there, but I just want to say that the, what it's done for our lives while still being able to be working at it as a business and express ourselves is possibly the best part. Yeah, absolutely. So I uh, just want to share a bit more of the journey. To me, it was a dream come true to be able to leave my full-time job. It's something I always knew I wanted to do. I didn't know quite how to really get there. So when you look at the timeline from 2014 to 2016, it was really only about a year and a half. Um, a lot of my guests, people who listened to the show, a lot of referrals came in. I was able to build a business. My business no longer so much about video production only or website development, but at the time, I had enough uh, gigs, just enough interest, and I was able to leave my job in January 2016. Now, uh, Adam mentioned um, a couple of folks already. It really sort of makes us like almost tear up, but Garcia Atherton and Andy and, and Kevin Atherton, they're from Cirque du Soleil. There may be some familiar faces that you recognize, like Seth Godin, maybe Chris Voss, who wrote the book, Never Split the Difference, Sarah Cooper in the past couple of years. Um, and it was just really amazing to say, okay, what, where is this podcast taking us? By the way, none of this was really planned. I had no idea. And, but at one point we'll be like, okay, wouldn't it be great uh, for me to record, to produce a documentary series? And it was so popular at the time, 2017, 18. And so we did it, travel around uh, the US mostly, West Coast, East Coast. We put the documentary together we submit it to Amazon Prime and they did not reject it. And the next thing we knew, we went from, you know, podcasts only to having a documentary. And, uh, you know, we didn't really stop there because I became so obsessed with the video production, video storytelling, um, went from being very nervous, very self-conscious to now uh, pretty comfortable. And uh, I started my, uh, basically my YouTube channel and start you know creating content as you can see down here in the lower right hand corner i said why not i'm gonna start starting in 2020 i'm gonna live stream all my podcast content to multiple platforms youtube being one of them i also live streamed to facebook to twitter and instagram is a little tricky but multiple platforms and as you can see you know some of them are getting immediate tractions and uh 
you know, years later, some of these interviews are still uh, gaining views. Uh, the most popular is with Chris Voss. Um, and as these, you know, as these videos are just living out there, and I was thinking, I wish I, I thought of this before, because prior to recording videos, all I had to rely on was just audio. And I found the analytics for audio alone was very limiting. So this was a very, a very eye opening for me. So I'm going to pause and say, like, based on what we have shared so far, are there any questions, thoughts before we keep going? Okay. All right. So let's do this. Um, if you haven't started your podcast, um, I know that we kind of did a very quick survey. There's some of you already forming the ideas in your head, right? Getting really excited. You probably still have some doubts, but if you haven't started your podcast, the most important thing, as we have learned in the past eight years, nine years really, is to start. Um, this is so important. I know it sounds silly, but I have spoken with creators who have recorded their shows and put away those audios for three months, six months, and really hesitate, hesitating to bring them back out to say, are they still relevant? Um, should I still do this? So please start if that's the one takeaway that you have today. And second thing I learned, these are some of the important lessons I learned over the years, is that you are actually allowed to change your mind. Uh, you can, in fact, change your podcast name, change how you record the topics and themes. You can change that cover art as well. You can change and upgrade your microphone, your setup, your editing software, your hosting service, guess your interview. Um, these can be changed. So it's really, it, uh, you know, most people do spend a lot of time thinking the strategy is so important uh, until that's set in stone, but these things can be changed. And knowing, this is like actually a, advice uh, that Adam mentioned, as I'm still dwelling on writing my first book, Adam said, well, what if it's not the only book you're going to write? Well, what if this is not the only podcast you're going to be starting? And all of a sudden, I think the pressure really is just off. Now, uh, your voice is unique in this world, so use it. This part is so true. I'm going to add something else. Even if others disagree, if, even if your friends and family don't quite see the point, during the holiday season, are you making money? How much time are you spending on this? Like, is it really worth it? I encourage you to share your voice even more if you are you know a woman a minority you have an accent you have a disability and we've heard all these questions before the answer is yes you should share your voice now as i mentioned earlier the number one mistake i have made as a podcaster is not recording video from day one now i'm not going to be too harsh on myself because at the time that i started not only that I wasn't comfortable on video, a lot of our guests were not comfortable recording videos. I still remember one of the episodes I did in 2019, just a year before the pandemic, I still had a lot of guests saying, well, I, I'm feeling really self-conscious, maybe not. However, as soon as I offer to live stream and record videos in 2020, just within months of the pandemic, every single person said yes, they were all comfortable recording videos. So the good news is by now, a lot of people are, and you can take advantage of that kind of built-in Zoom training. Um, now, why YouTube? Or you may be thinking like social media, well, YouTube, what's the point? Is my audience really there? Now, uh, it's important to remind folks that uh, YouTube is part of Google, which is the largest search engine in the world. Well, YouTube has to be the the biggest video search engine. And there are 2.1 billion monthly active users, active. Uh, and there are approximately 122 million users per day. And the most important thing, which I hear as a pain point for podcasters is they wanna be memorable. They want people to return to their show. And it turns out that when it comes to the types of media, people actually retain 95% of a message better if it's consumed via video compared to 10% via text. Um, so this is the this is the landscape of the traffic on YouTube today. And it's just something that I ignored for years because I wasn't comfortable on video. And I was really hoping if video, my my 
audio podcast could just sell sell itself and reach maximum amount of audience, I never have to go on YouTube. Uh, but there are many, many benefits to consider YouTube right now. By the way, even if this is not really part of your strategy in this moment or before the session, this is the part where I feel like I really want you to walk away and at least be aware of this opportunity. So as I mentioned, YouTube has a lot to offer to podcasters. There are very sophisticated analytics behind the scenes that are not currently available, frankly, on any podcasting platforms. And monetization is another uh, really offer. So you can monetize your channel once you reach 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers. Now, that 4,000 watch hours is very scary to even YouTubers. The good news is when it comes to podcasting, because your form, your format or content is generally longer, you can actually reach the 4,000 watch hours a lot sooner than somebody who's doing two, three minute videos alone. For me, the, my one interview that I did with Chris Voss in 2017, that one video complete, I think gave me nearly 3,000 watch hours. By the way, your content doesn't have to be video. It can even be audio for you to still accumulate those watch hours. I'm going to show you in just a moment how to easily convert your existing uh, audio content to be videos. And analytics, uh, I mentioned as well. So the, the level of intimacy, which I didn't realize, uh, the good news is text and images, sure, they're more flat, and then you can be touched by blogging and writing. I remember when I first launched my podcast and people were reflecting on the fact that, well, that's really intimate, right? You put on your earbuds and you're taking a walk and you're listening in. And there's a very, very intimate connection. And there's convenience as well. You don't have to hold on to a screen. I totally agree. Uh, but there's another level of, of intimate connection. When people are seeing you, you don't have to always look, you know, the, you don't have, you don't need perfect makeup. You don't need to look your very best to leave an impression. So um, absolutely just love the fact that sometimes these days I will even just hit record. I'll record a video and I will repurpose. I will literally just save the audio portion and then upload that to, you know, for instance, Anchor, Back then, I used Lipson. You can still repurpose just the audio portion of video to be your podcast content. But unfortunately, you can't quite do that the other way around, right? It's You can't really recover the um, video if you didn't record in the first place. So, um, Adam, do you feel like you want to add anything? Like you have seen, I know it's, it's video podcasting is new to you as well. Yeah, so I know my, my uncle who's a teacher said, don't ask the people in the class, don't, don't, make them ask questions, but I would love any kind of feedback or questions from the, the people who are present. Certainly, you know, you don't have to, but anyone tell us something, ask us something, what's what's of interest? Any any thoughts around that? Yeah, there are no wrong questions. Where do you actually film the YouTube stuff? Uh, if, you to, if you want to film, where do you, where do you get it from? Yeah, so uh, there are many different ways to film, and I think I'm just about to be that. Uh... So I want to talk about this real quick. If we're talking about interview format, the good news is you're allowed to use Zoom exactly the way that we're doing this right now, right? Um, I know I don't have to be a teacher for Zoom so much anymore. The simplest setup is using Zoom and a split screen. So what they call the gallery view, if you're interviewing someone, whether it's you and another person, you and two, three other people, you can do that. Now, if you were to ask me over time, I did that too, actually. But then over time, I realized there's a limitation in quality and also distribution. I, I don't really like the black bars, for instance, within Zoom. I just wish, you know, there's more I can do. For instance, um, if I'm talking, interviewing Adam, I would like to display his name, his questions on the screen, simple things like that. And I wanted to do that without spending a lot of money and a co-host. So it goes down to the second option called Restream. I've been using Restream since uh, the beginning of 2020 to go live for, for all my shows. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is. This is an actual inside restream um, studio right it's you basically open this up in a browser so no obs no weird connections you open it up this is just you on air you're live 
let's say if somebody else's live is going to be stacked right below where Anya is. And on the right hand side, you can see live chat as they're coming in from multiple channels, you can see that they're coming in from LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and you can also prepare captions and graphics. So that's how I go about recording and going live with actual live content. Uh, there's a third thing I will just uh, mention, which is I listed PodCastle here. They're such a fantastic company. PodCastle, have you guys heard of PodCastle? Show of hands. I'm just curious. Now, okay. I wasn't made aware of them until very recently. First of all, they're a relatively young company. Probably they've been around for a year and a half, about two years. They've been growing very rapidly. And so they're actually an all-in-one podcast production platform. So for me right now, what I love about podcasts is I'm able to record 1080p 4K high resolution videos. So in other words, I'll ditch Zoom. If I'm going to interview Adam, I'll send Adam an easy link from Podcastle and say, let's record videos. And not only it's video high quality, their audio is also high quality. Even if you have background sound and things like that, they have something called Magic Dust which is a feature that's built into PodCastle that's going to eliminate and, and really reduce the background sound and make your voice come across almost like studio quality. And uh, that's something that it's just going to be hard to do with Zoom alone. Um, I'm going to continue with where else, what else are you using to record? So I have a webcam. This is a Logitech 4K. It's probably pretty high quality. I have a big background. A lot of people can you you know record uh, whether it's a solo show or interview show directly with just a webcam. In fact, you know, we have guests coming to our house and I'll literally just pull the chair over and somebody will be sitting right here and I still have enough background. Now, if I want to record even higher quality, I will rely on what's to this side of my room, as you can see here. So I have a ring light. I also have a 4K camera. That's a Sony 6400. Um, so I just record video that way. Does it, does it help more or less? Okay. Did, yes. Did you, to, did you have to invest a lot of money up front? Uh, for the recording, I would say barely anything at all. So I'll clarify what that is, right? So the webcam you have currently is sufficient. The only thing that I don't love is the built-in webcam, whether you use a Mac or a PC, it's very grainy. It's about like 720p in terms of definition. That's why when I first, when we were first hit with the pandemic, I actually um, bought a Logitech 1080p webcam. That right now is probably $70. The one that I'm using right now, it's, it's more high-end. This is like about $129. That's it. Now, the sound is important. You don't have to use this mic I have. Uh, I have, um, when I send the deck, you'll see I use um, Audio Technica, which is a microphone that's under $100. And literally you can use that for years. So when you add it all up, your video podcasting investments probably can just be a couple hundred dollars upfront. And the system can stay with you for, for years. In terms of the software, I'll mention real quick, Zoom is Zoom, it's $14.99 a month. Restream has the, the lowest tier is $19. They even have a free version, completely free version, not even freemium. And uh, the only restriction is instead of streaming to both your Facebook personal profile and your page, you can only do one. So for me, fine, I'll pay the $20. Uh, Podcastle also has a free version. So there are actually a lot of free products out there and you can upgrade only if you have to so that's a great question i always advise people to not worry about spending thousands of dollars getting the product because you might end up not needing them or not liking them so start small and you will know exactly when to upgrade i remember when i started my youtube journey like purely video I just used my phone, just my, just my iPhone at the time was not even like a very high end one. It was the older iPhone. And then three months later, as we're growing the, the channel, um, three months later it was towards the end of 2019. I, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I was thinking, no, oh, from tax reasons and all that, let me invest in a camera. My Sony camera, the body of the camera is, I think 
uh, eight to nine hundred dollars is definitely cheaper now, and the lens is about three hundred dollars. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, let me see if I skipped over anything here. Um, Oh yeah, I really like the stats measured by YouTube, which is 80% of top watch videos feature hosts on videos. And I would like to just mention when I was, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just a me thing, but when I first started podcasting, I was really worried that I was talk I was talking too much. I was, you know, too eager to ask too many questions. And I kind of, and even when I started video podcasting, I was like, oh, I don't need to be on screen. I would hide myself in a corner, but turns out it's your show. People will actually like to see you. It is more engaging when the host is part of the content. So just as a reminder. Okay, so this part may be relevant to one or two of you at the moment. Um, it comes up, people say, oh, I've been recording audios for years now. Now, if I wanna consider YouTube, doesn't mean that they all go to waste, it's not true. YouTube is not only not preventing people to use audio, they encourage you now to use audio. Now, you can't just upload an MP3 to YouTube. So you will need a tool such as repurpose.io that's absolutely not sponsored. They're a great company and uh, also very affordable that it can absorb and basically feed in with your RSS feed and automatically publish all, you know, one at a time or all your audio content to YouTube. So that is really convenient so you can literally set up and keep the rss feed there and it will just automatically detect when there's a new episode and it will publish the video version you can even give it a you can design the thumbnail and things like that um right so that's one option and um the other is you know you can choose to edit down your audio or you know you can record shorter even if you have video uh content you don't have to upload the whole thing. You can actually slice and dice them into under 60 seconds, a few minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. So there are a lot of options for the content that you create. Adam, anything else you would like to add here? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm listening along. Okay, cool. Sometimes it's like also important for us to reflect. It's uh, Adam and I continue to have these conversations about like the tools we're using, are we optimizing uh, for different channels and things like that? So, so I, that was my tutorial video on exactly how to do that. There are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, repurpose.io tutorials and a lot of other tutorials on YouTube that you can check out as well. Maybe it's, maybe this is too obvious, but um, the restream, you record once and how many different platforms does it stream to simultaneously? Because maybe that's obvious, but that's that's sort of the important thing of it that we didn't actually say clearly. So Restream allows you to stream uh, onto more than 30, 30 plus platforms. And I have never used more than five or six. And at one point I was even streaming to Twitch and I realized that just because teenagers are doing it doesn't mean that my audience is there. So I stopped that. My main channel, as I, as I mentioned, YouTube is a must for me because it's evergreen and other social media, uh, including Twitter and uh, also LinkedIn is a big one. If uh, there's an opportunity for some of your audience to live on LinkedIn, I know a lot of our clients are very active on LinkedIn and I would highly recommend that as well. I and just remember. Yeah, go ahead, Adam. To find that term. So evergreen, maybe everyone's familiar. It simply means content that's still good as time goes by. So rather than just a comment on today's news and tomorrow they want to hear about different news, uh, one of the things about uh, YouTube to some degree, depending on what you're watching versus sometimes Twitter, is that people will go back. I mean, just before this, I was watching a video on a guitar pickup that's eight years old. So if you're sort of trying to convince yourself, like, is YouTube valuable? the content that you put up there might be valuable to the people you want to reach for a very long time, which makes the investment sometimes a better idea. Absolutely. The uh, YouTube is really the only channel we have explored that favors and actually still works for evergreen or older content in general. Whereas social media, you think about um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you don't really control you know, how the videos are showing up, it's really difficult, sometimes impossible to find existing content. So 
Um, we really love working on YouTube, as you notice. Um, right now at the top of this page, for instance, you have your videos and now you have this shorts here as well. And you also have live, right? When I go live using Restream onto YouTube, now it has its own tab. I just reminded myself why I decided to actually share, even share the screenshot. So YouTube is now basically creating a place for these podcasts to live. Now the prediction, uh, this is only a prediction. It's not confirmed. That's it's possible that soon you will see also a podcast tab at the top. You know, uh, we're podcasters. We're all very excited about that. Okay, so now I actually want to clarify and talk about the format a bit. And, you know, interview videos um, with makers, creators, influencers. Uh, I, I think these are the easiest content to create. And, you know, all we have to do, like I, I have one tomorrow, for instance, and I have Restream all set up. I plan for some questions and off we go. Like, instead of being just one person, I have to think about what is the script, what I need to talk about. Um, so interviews are fantastic. And the only thing that I would always advise creators to do is don't forget to repurpose your existing content. That is something for some of you, you're starting out, you're just creating your content. Think about that, not just think about, remember that there's more you can do with your 30 minute, one hour content. So often we do all the planning and finally this recorded, all the coordination, right? You're exhausted, show notes. Ah, oh, you just want to move on to the next guest and the next guest. And you do this for years and you, you go back and say, wow, I really don't think I have maximized the content that I already have, whether it's creating quote cards, creating sound bites and, um, you know, things of that nature. We can certainly show you some examples. Um, so I also want to just remind everyone that there are so many different ways to create interviews, creating your podcast as video content on the left-hand side. Um, you will, you can definitely explore these, uh, examples so on the left-hand side, it's just a split screen, literally, right. And they're clearly in, you know, this is a remote, uh, virtual recording and split screen. They're nowhere near each other or on the right-hand side, this is Tim Ferriss being, uh, interviewed, uh, and they're sitting in the same room. So I'm going to click. So, so for instance, this is another format. Oftentimes people def default to, oh, I, you know, production team, multi multiple cameras, uh, you don't have to. Now everybody's comfortable with zoom recordings, uh, with restream, just to know that the options are available to us as normal people, like regular everyday creators. And I think the big problem is that people expect that they're going to have a perfect so, system. So now, um, one other thing I would like to talk about are some of these how to videos. Whenever uh, I listen to podcasts, I realize there's just so much information and wisdom that are basically shared with the world. As it turns out, like, I don't know if any one of you have experimented or experienced this. Uh, for me, I was less, a lot less active on YouTube, but since the pandemic, I have become much more active because I live in the house and I, you know, there's so many things I found myself needing to fix, need to understand. Uh, I'm also a caregiver for my mom who's in her seven, uh, early seventies things that are come up and you know i started looking things up on youtube and turns out the how to video even the video specifically that starts with how to do something is very popular and when you interview someone all right and it's really it's inevitable that some of these questions will come up like how do you do this we ask entrepreneurs all the time you know how do you make your first one thousand dollars how do you make a thousand dollars from your first digital product and I ignore those. Those are the things I really want to go back to. And those are really good uh, nuggets and bite-sized content that can come out. Not only for YouTube, a lot of this can be shared, you know, again, across LinkedIn, social media as well. They're highly searchable. And so the next part is, as you're getting started, you may be wondering, mm, Faye, like there are channels I love, they're getting so many views. I can see that people are following a certain pattern. Is there such a thing as YouTube strategy? And the short answer is yes. And that's why, you know, we, ha we have our business working 
uh, with more, we usually work with fairly established creators and businesses, but there are tools out there that you can use. So TubeBuddy, this is their logo, and this is their link, starts with only $4 a month. And they give you basically uh, down here, it's called the Keyword Explorer. So whatever you need to search for. So this term, I just literally typed in three ways to facilitate successful workshops. Now it's telling me based on the data it has gathered on YouTube, you know, how, what's the likelihood of something, uh, a piece of content like this could take off. So as you're editing your interview content, you could actually do, uh, you know, conduct these research right alongside on YouTube. Okay. So as I mentioned, so Adam and I last year in 2022, because we're living with so much content and we're also working with webinar hosts, you know, people came up to us and said, well, you know, we really want to just be able to share bite-sized content on, you know, within our Facebook group, we want to understand more of what we have done. And uh, so I just want to share this with you guys. If you have a show now, or you're going to record something later on, if you want us to help you break down a one hour piece of content, uh, we're going to show you an example, demo that as well in just a moment. We'll be very happy to help you with that. Um, one of the things that Adam and I like to do is actually get into uh, the mindset of the creator. Like, you know, what made you start the show? What really would you like to highlight to really understand what you're doing? So we're really, it's that's why we call this is artificial intelligence powered, but also human curated process. So um here are some additional links and resources um i would absolutely encourage you to explore these all came from official you know youtube.com and they put in a lot of work but it's just a little easier to actually uh you know to explain to articulate it for us to have a conversation so i'm happy to like basically um open up any of these documents about the do's and don'ts how to get started mm -hmm.